Before we begin, I'd just like to say that this video is totally not a parody of Slip Phantom's Unicum Guides for World of Tanks, and that they totally did not inspire me to do this video. You also should totally not check out his channel, because he makes totally awful videos. Let's begin. The 1999 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 is what you get when you spend all of your time whining to the game developers telling them to add a car brand to Horizon instead of fixing the game's multiplayer. Something which they still haven't done by the way, because Free Roam Rush still exists. I don't really understand all the hype behind the return of Mitsubishi to Horizon 4. It's just the same cars we've all seen before, but in a different game. I was happy to see them return, but not excited. Please give us an Evo 3K thanks. Speaking of Mitsubishi being in previous games, Turn 10 actually made Mitsubishis in this game worse than they were in Horizon 3. Before I say anything about the Evo 6, keep in mind that this entire video and guide can also be applied to all the other Evos, as they are all very similar cars, but I think the Evo 6 is the best. When most JDM fans think of rallying, three car brands come to mind, Subaru, Toyota, and Mitsubishi, all three of which competed in the FIA Group A Rally Championship, and neither of them were the best. The Lancer Evolution series were Mitsubishi's take on a rally car. They are very often compared to the Impreza, and for a very obvious reason, this video will probably have numerous comments about the rivalry between the two brands. Trust me, I know from experience. But ironically, all of the Evos are very similar to the Impreza's. In fact, they are so similar, that they all suffer from the same issues. To put it bluntly, they are not very good cars. All of the Mitsubishis in this game, suffer from a little something, that I will call, the Subaru Syndrome. Basically, they sit in a very awkward spot when it comes to their starting PI. If you try to fully upgrade them to S1 like you used to in Horizon 3, they won't make it to the top of S1 without an engine swap, and as we all know, engine swapping is for tiny little baby men. However, if you try to make them A-class, you won't have much PI to play around with, which makes getting a decent mix of both power and handling a bit tricky. When it comes to A-class rally cars, there are much better cars than the Evo. However, the Evo has one trick up its sleeve, that most of the top tier rally cars don't, it's very easy to drive. It's not the fastest or the most agile, but it's by far the most consistent and beginner friendly. It has just enough power, to be quick when pushed to the limit, but remain easy to handle when you do. And most importantly, it's front engined and all wheel drive, which is by far the easiest layout to rally with. As long as it has a good consistent driver, the Evo can easily snag podiums, and even first places. I'm not saying anything new here, but when it comes to rally, you must drive very differently when compared to asphalt. Usually, in this segment, I teach you how to take individual corners, but in rally, there is a lot to learn, as there's many things that can quickly make your ace go from 100 to 0. Today, we will teach you about momentum and how to keep it, which is very important in a car as slow as this. To teach you this, we have brought here our studio's professional racing driver. Some say, the real reason he didn't participate in the last episode, was because he was too fat to fit an appeal. All we know, is he is. Sans from Undertale. Let's watch. In Rally, your brakes don't really do much, so you might as well try to use them as little as you can. If you race with a driving line on, you can completely ignore the braking zones for a lot of corners, but don't get greedy. When you brake, toss your car towards the inside of a corner, so that you enter it sideways facing the exit, but not too sideways. Although you can get away with sliding and rally, you still want to do it as little as possible, or else you might waste your momentum. Basically, only slide if your only other option is slowing down. As you're sliding through the corner, because you're in an all-wheel drive car, stepping on the throttle will not only propel you forward, but also make you slide towards the outside. This is how you turn, and eventually make it out of the corner. Carrying as much speed through the corner without understeering off the road is the key to maintaining your speed throughout the entire rally track. If you feel like you've overshot the corner, letting go of the throttle will make your car much more responsive, so you can turn in more. 
Most of the time you won't even need to use the brakes to correct your trajectory, unless you went into the corner stupidly fast. In which case it's your fault, dummy. As I've said before, there are a lot of things in rallying, that can make your ace go from 100 to 0 in an instant. It's dangerous, and as such, that is your weakness. The car in itself is so easy to drive, that it doesn't really have any weaknesses. It's a bit below average when it comes to its speed, but that won't affect you, if you know how to drive it. It also might understeer at times, because it is all-wheel drive. If this happens, just tap the handbrake a little, and you'll be good. Now that you've mastered all of this, it's time to move on to the car itself. Thank you for showing us how to drive, Sands from Undertale. Because you can't legitimately reach the top of S1, we'll be forced to build this car for A class, despite not having much PI to play with. Before getting any upgrade, you need to get the absolute most important upgrade of any rally car in Forza. Go to Aero and Appearance, and get mud flaps on your car, because rally car. If you don't get mud flaps, you will kick up a lot of dirt and dust towards spectators, and that is rude. If you want, you can also get some rally fog lights for your car, but I personally don't like the look of the default Forza ones, so I tend not to. With that out of the way, start by getting rally tires, obviously. Rallying with anything other than rally tires at A class is a sin, and you will suck on snow. However, here's where things start to get different. We are going to save as much PI4 power as possible, so make the tires as thick as you can, only in the back, as it doesn't increase the PI at all. Alternatively, you can leave them alone, but I like the extra grip it provides, although it will cause a bit of understeer. Upgrade your rear track width as well, but not the front track width, as this will increase your PI. Next up, get a race clutch, transmission, and differential, we will come back for the drive line later, as always. Get race brakes, rally springs, and race anti-roll bars. Since this is a rally car, get a race roll cage. It might seem like this is a crutch, rather than an upgrade. After all, it makes the car heavier, and will affect your acceleration and launch. However, it helps with handling and control, and will give you better weight distribution overall, which is important for rally. Not only that, but it will actually lower your PI, so it doesn't really matter that it makes your car heavier. And lastly, because this is an all-wheel drive, you want to get weight reduction before power. Rally cars need to be light and nimble, all-wheel drives are heavy and sluggish. Getting weight reduction will improve every stat except top speed, which you don't really need for rallying. Now for the engine parts. We usually start by getting camshafts, followed by exhaust and a turbo. However, for this particular car, we don't have much PI to play around with. In rally cars, torque is almost as, if not more important than horsepower. The camshafts on the Evo 6 don't give you that much torque, so you want to fully upgrade the turbo instead. This will give you a much better mix of both horsepower and torque, as long as you keep the turbo spooled. Sadly, there is no anti-lag system in this game to help us with that, so next up, get camshafts. Unfortunately, we can only get street, as sport will put us in S1, so up next get a sport exhaust. If you've done everything correctly, you should be at 798 pi, which should be more than enough to get whatever shitty ricer rims or body kit you want on your car, but if you've come to the conclusion that you should probably make your rally car look like a rally car instead of a JDM stands fagmobile, then go back to the engine parts and get a race flywheel. Although you're at 800 pi, we are still not done here, go back to drivetrain and check if you can still get a drive line. Luckily, we can still get a sport drive line. Now that you've made sure your car won't flip over when it hits a jump, it's time to tune it to perfection. When it comes to all rally cars, acceleration is much more important than top speed, as most rally tracks are very twisty and don't really have any long straights. Adjust your final drive towards acceleration until your top speed is anywhere between 150 to 160 miles per hour depending on your preference, or 240 to 260 kilometers per hour. For alignment, get negative 1 degree of camber in the front, and leave the back camber alone. Get plus 0.12 in the front, and minus 0.12 in the back. Whatever you do, don't touch your ride height. 
you want your car to be as high as possible to be able to handle bumps and jumps in the road, as well as being able to cut some corners. Because that's what rally drivers do. And lastly, get anywhere from 110 to 125% braking force pressure, depending on preference. On loose surfaces, it's best to have much stronger brakes when compared to asphalt. If you want, you can try playing around with the differential, but I've found that the stock settings work just fine. And that's it. If you feel like all of that was too complicated, you can just download my tune from the Forza storefront. My game attack is Flamethrower XXX. Now that you finally built an Evo for anything besides street racing, go get some podium finishes. And remember to stay away from the trees. And the jumps. And the bumps. Actually, just stay away from rally, it's scary. Goodbye and thank you for watching.